Hello and welcome to the Power Grid, the footballguys.com daily fantasy show. I'm joined as always by John Lee, Ryan Hester, Devin Knotts, and Jeff Pasquino. We're here to talk to you about the week three main slate, the 13 games that we have on Sunday, and we're going to dive right into it and start talking about Vegas. John, I'm going to kick it to you first because you do our Tuesday uh, Vegas article each week. Tell us what Vegas is telling you about week three. Yeah, it's a, it's a really strange week this week. Uh, when I was putting together the Vegas value chart this week, uh, which, by the way, goes out every Tuesday. You can find it on the site. Uh, the, the one thing that stood out to me were how many away favorites there were this week. We have six away favorites and only three away favorites above what I consider to be the cutoff of where things start to get interesting, and that's around 24 points for their implied team totals. This is something that uh, I think we need to be weary of with cash games because a lot of times uh, history has proven that um, away favorites uh, do not perform as well as home favorites do. So it's something you need to be thinking about. There have been a number of studies that have been done to show that uh, these guys can be fool's gold from time to time. So uh, just be wary of that as you're making out your lineups and, and try to focus in on guys who you think are in great situations. Now, I'm seeing 10 away favorites on this slate. Are you, did you say you're seeing six? I said six that were above what I consider to be a, uh, a cutoff of 24 points for implied team total. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. That we would be looking at for DFS, uh, yeah. mining those DFS plays. That makes a lot of sense. And I think that probably at the, at the top of that list, we've got Sunday Night Football, uh, Oakland at Washington. That's got the highest implied team total of the week. And uh, Oakland as the, the highest uh, team scoring, according to Vegas, this week, tied with New England. Uh, so those are going to be a couple of teams that we'll uh, talk about a lot of players from. Jeff, let me kick it to you. What other games stand out to you as sort of like key games where there's going to be a lot of DFS decisions to make this week? Uh, again, when you need to look at the – well, first uh, with the over-unders, I think Vegas is kind of skewing it a little bit towards the lower side because they've been getting killed on the under. So the numbers are a little bit tweaked this week, but I still think that there's still a few games. Um, I, I kind of lean towards uh, the Carolina-New Orleans game. Uh, that's a very interesting game. There could be a lot of points there, but you know, it's a qu question of whether you trust the Panthers this week. That's probably my top game that I'm looking at from the totals. Yeah, and we'll get into those Panthers uh, players and tell you which guys we like and which ones we don't. Uh, I think the Atlanta at Detroit game is also going to be a high-scoring affair with options on both sides of the ball. And the Cincinnati at Green Bay game is another one we'll look closely at. We'll obviously cover all the games, but uh, those are some of the ones that I think that we'll see a lot of fantasy options from. So let's go to quarterbacks. That's where we dig into the picks. That's what the people want. What are your picks this week? Ryan, I want to hear uh, who are a couple of quarterbacks that you're excited about this week, and do you think they're going to be highly owned uh, at DraftKings or at FanDuel? Yeah, I think uh, most people's analysis is starting with the Sunday night game, just like ours kind of did, uh, with Oakland at Washington. A lot of love for Derek Carr out there. Uh, Oakland's averaging 35 a game through two. Uh, he's the uh, kind of the, the straw that stirs that drink, so to speak. Um, Kirk Cousins is, uh, has struggled uh, so far, but uh, you know maybe the opponents have been a little bit tougher than what we've seen from a lot of quarterbacks. And he's also cheaper, and he's also at home. So to John's earlier point, um, if, if you want to fade a short home or a short road favorite, which is something uh, that you know maybe can be profitable, uh, go with Cousins. He's cheaper, it'll save you money, and, and maybe he puts up more points than Carr. And I, I think he does this week, actually. Yeah, and I think that uh, more people are going to be on Cousins this week than, than Carr in this game. And uh, you mentioned that uh, Kirk Cousins has kind of struggled a little bit uh, as of late. There's another quarterback that I think is going to have heavy ownership this week where people will have to make a call whether they trust him despite his bad start to the season, and that's Cam Newton. Uh, Devin, tell me, are you uh, feeling good about Cam Newton because of this choice matchup against New Orleans, or are you still a little nervous because of what you've seen so far this year? A little bit nervous, I'm not going to lie, but I think that you have to like him in this matchup. He, the Saints are allowing 388 yards per game passing, 10.5 yards per attempt, and P.J. Williams, I mean, has looked atrocious so far this year. So it, it's definitely an offense that I'm going to look at, look for in both cash and GPPs. Not sure I'm going to have 100% because Tom Brady's a guy who 
I like a lot this week, mostly because Kevin Johnson is out for the Kevin Johnson is out for the Texans this week, and they lost AJ Bouye in the offseason. So they're really thin at the at the cornerback position position, and the Patriots are one of the high, highest projected scoring teams of the week. And let me ask you this about how your builds are kind of unfolding. Uh, it feels a little tighter this week than it has in week one or week two. And I agree with you that Tom Brady is a great cash game play, but uh, are you able to find salary relief at other places where you can afford Brady in cash games? Yeah, I think it depends. So DeMar- we'll get into running backs in a minute, but if DeMarco Murray is out, um, Derek Henry or Dalvin Cook, um, for, for Minnesota. There's there's some running backs out there that are relatively cheap. Wide receiver is a little bit tougher, um, and we'll get in that get into that in a little bit. But there are still some guys that are out there. Kelvin Benjamin pairing with pairing with uh, Tom Brady is still a good option. So um, there there are there are, it's tighter this week, but there's definitely some options. Yeah, and I agree with you. And I I want to hear more about people's takes on some of those salary relief guys to try to get some of these top plays with great matchups this week. Um, let's see. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about quarterbacks. Uh, John, tell me about some quarterbacks you like this week. Maybe uh, maybe some GPP guys. Yeah, I think for GPP this week, uh, you know, the most obvious guys are those quarterbacks in that, in that high-scoring game there in Washington, those being uh, Cousins and Derek Carr. Uh, but outside of maybe the obvious, you know, GPPs, we're always looking for, for lower ownership. And I think one way you can go this week is maybe by going cheap at the quarterback position. Uh, you know, this Indianapolis, Indianapolis Colts defense has made some uh, – Sam Bradford look like a Hall of Fame quarterback already. Last week they, they gave up some, uh, some big yardage as well, um, allowing over 300 yards per game um, through the air. And this week they get a, a rookie quarterback in Deshaun Kaiser, whose offense truthfully is a mess. But you've got uh, such a cheap salary there with respect to Deshaun Kaiser. You can pair him up with a guy like Rashard Higgins. If those guys connect, maybe maybe just for two touchdowns, um, the amount of money that you can spend on a guy like Le'Veon Bell or Antonio Brown, um, you can really do some fancy things with the rest of your lineup. So uh, that's a that's a type of guy I like this week. Maybe uh, being completely contrary and and spending down at the quarterback position. Yeah, I, I, you know, Devin, do you have something you want to add as the resident uh, Browns fan? Do you trust your Browns in this situation? No. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. No. no. Uh, but if there's a receiver I'm looking at, I'm looking at Ricardo Lewis instead of Richard Higgins. Ah, interesting. Okay. Because I think a lot more people are on Higgins after his performance in week two. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have a little bit more you can tell us about liking Ricardo Lewis here? Yeah, so Ricardo Lewis is more of a big play speed guy, so he's going to be playing on the outside. Higgins is more of a – he ran a 4 6 5, 40 in, in coming out of college, um, so he's not really going to be we – saw, we saw him catch some deeper passes, but I think they're going to take some shots to Lewis. Hugh Jackson is probably the most honest coach in the NFL, and he's been talking – talking up Lewis all week, so and he's been talking down Kenny Britt. So I think we saw the last of Kenny Britt, um, potentially, so I'll be using some Ricardo Lewis and GPP only this week. Yeah, definitely GPP only, but that's uh, that's a good point. Um, Jeff, do you have any other quarterbacks you want to mention before we move along to running backs? Uh, I think you got to include the guys playing Atlanta and Detroit. I think you got both those guys. So you got Ryan and Stafford are definitely going to be in play. I think there's enough options this week that, that you don't – there's not going to be a true chalk, so it's going to be pretty much spread ownership around. Um, one guy I was going to save to later, but I'll throw him out there now. I'm really looking at Carson Wentz. Uh, I think that uh, the Javoris Jenkins uh, injury is going to be huge. Uh, I really, I really, I like the receiver. I like Jeffrey. I like uh, the tight end in, in, in Earth. So I think Carson Wentz could be a big play this week. Yeah, I think that's a good call. And uh, Stafford is a guy I'm looking at at cash games uh, for some salary relief. I think I like Stafford more than Cousins even. I don't know why I'm so yeah. gun shy about Cousins here, but I, I like Stafford at a similar price point more for cash. I feel safer based on the matchup against Atlanta, the likely shootout. John's giving me the red and green signal. Uh, what's your take there, buddy? Yeah, so I mean, I, I actually have a real, uh, something that I think we could walk through here. Uh, is sure. anybody else concerned about the pace of this game? Uh, I know uh, Devin was a big fan of this last week, pointing out how much, how much more slowly the Atlanta Falcons offense was running in week one. And in week two, it did not move that much more quickly. We know last year, 
the way that, de that Detroit was winning ball games was by dragging games out and going really, really slow. If that happens again this Sunday, you've got two teams who are running really, really slow. The number of plays that they run uh, from the offensive standpoint, I think, is, is lower. And I have a real uh, concern uh, focusing on these, these offenses in this situation outside of maybe a guy like Theo Riddick, who I think matches up well against that Atlanta's that Atlanta defense. They're two of the five slowest teams in the NFL so yeah. far this year. Yeah, and which carries over from last year in, in Detroit's case, as John said. Yeah, that's a really good point, John. And I think that's something we have to be very careful of. Maybe that shifts us to playing these guys in GPPs instead of trying to lean on Falcons and Lions in uh, cash games. Let's talk about some running backs. Uh, let me pitch this over to you, uh, Jeff, first. Uh, running backs, I feel like there's not 100% clear chalk at this position. I feel like there's a handful of guys that are, oh, Devin thinks there's pure <laughs> chalk. Uh, I think there's a handful of guys that people are gonna run through. Let me just run through some injury situations real quick and then we'll, we'll kick it around here a little bit. Um, DeMarco Murray uh, did not practice on Thursday. Devin mentioned that. I think everybody's going to be watching that because Derrick Henry quickly becomes chalk if DeMarco Murray doesn't play, and people might still play him even if Murray is active here. Jordan Howard uh, was limited on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, he may play here, but Tariq Cohen may get more playing time because he's dinged up. Rob Kelly was limited on Wednesday and Thursday for the Washington Redskins. And uh, Rex Burkhead did not practice on Thursday. I don't think he's going to end up playing in this game. That may mean more James White and Deion Lewis for the Patriots. Jay Ajahi, for some reason, didn't practice on Thursday. Maybe this is just rest. Maybe he'll practice Friday and be totally fine. But you just want to keep an eye on that. And similarly, uh, Melvin Gordon was limited on Thursday. Again, I don't think it's something to be worried about, but it's kind of a weird sort of later in the week downgrade that makes you just want to keep an eye on things. So uh, I tell you what, Devin disagrees on chalk. Let me pitch it to Devin for chalk, and then we'll come back to Jeff for, for some more takes on this. What do you think, Devin? Jay Ajayi is the guy. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not even – he's going to be by far the highest-owned player this week. The Jets – we've talked about the Jets' run defense, Darren Lee at the – at the running back position is just not a NFL running back, and Demario Davis isn't much better. Um, Ajayi looked tremendous last week, so 122 total yards, 82 of those came after contact. So he is he's in he's in a great spot. Um, the coach came out today and said the injury is not serious, so I don't expect him to even be limited in this game. So I think that he's the clear cut guy this week. Yeah, yeah, I think he's going to be the highest owned for sure. Jeff, who other than Ajahi do you see as strong cash game plays this week? I think a lot of people are going to try and get Le'Veon Bell in the lineups. I think you're going to see a lot of Bell and Ajahi stacks uh, as starting off as their core, um, just game script and, and talent level. Uh, I think the next tier is probably uh, Melvin Gordon and Ty Montgomery, especially in PPR leagues. I think both those guys are going to be big options. The guys can get overlooked. I think that's going to have – could have high ownership, but over get overlooked is uh, – Kareem Hunt, and again, he got overlooked last week. He scored two touchdowns. He's got five on the year, um, but he's going to get overlooked. And uh, that's the one guy I'm kind of I'm, I'm looking at a little bit harder this week and see if I, if he makes more sense. Can I pitch this to you guys real quick? Are you guys sure. concerned with Le'Veon Bell's 3.2 yards per carry in the first two games? No, I'm, I'm not. not. I, I think against the Browns means, and the Vikings, I, I don't know. Vikings are good. We have yeah. uh, a resident Pittsburgh Steelers uh, fanboy here, and I'll, I'll let him take the stage. I'd, I'm just going to say that this guy has only been playing for two weeks, and I think a lot of it is just attributable to him trying to get his wheels back, how, how to read uh, you know, the, the lines behind his, his uh, blockers. I mean, he's really a, a unique individual in terms of how he runs the ball. I, I fully expect him to get back to full speed um, this week, next week, uh, moving forward, uh, the more reps he gets, the better he's going to be. What do you What do you think there, Ryan? Being the Steelers fan, I, I agree. I mean, he he came out. He was. It was. We talked. I think after week one, we talked last week about how he was sort of quasi punished in the Cleveland game early. He got a no rhythm. He got no carries. He he had his fewest touches, his fewest fantasy points in a long time. And last week, I think they tried to, to overcorrect that. They ran the ball. Watching that game, I, I was ready. I, I wanted them to cut Roethlisberger loose. I wanted them to – and they just ran it, ran it, ran it. He had 27 carries. 
It was a hard defense. I've never seen, uh, I shouldn't say never, last two years, haven't seen the Steelers struggle to get yards like that, especially at home. Uh, I think Minnesota's really good. I left that game thinking more about them than I did about Le'Veon Bell being bad or being, uh, you know, a guy that's just going to average 3.2 for the whole season. So I think it's coming, whether it's this week or not, I don't know. But opportunity is, is so key in this game, as we all know. So I think he's still worth paying for, certainly. And I'm not, I, his price is lower now than it's been since, like, like middle of last season. He was over 10K on DraftKings for a time last season. So get it while it's hot. I'm not saying he won't get there. I'm just taking a wait-and-see approach. I think that due to his ownership, he's an easy fade in GPPs this week. Hmm. GPP, sure. I, I can see that. I can see that point. I, I still think he's a good good guy to lean on in cash games, though. If, uh, if you're not paying up for Le'Veon Bell in cash games and you're looking for some salary relief at running back, uh, who likes the idea of playing Mike Gillisley in this uh, New England-Houston game? New England has the highest implied team total of the week. I am considering Gillisley in some of my cash lineups. Is can you join my cash game? games? <laughs> nice. <laughs> so no, no one else. Please. No one else likes that. No one else likes that. No. Nope. Not for right. cash games. Not for cash Not games. For cash. But you like him for GPPs. I absolutely. I think he's an excellent GPP play this week. Looking over uh, Buzzard's numbers, he's 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 got him projected at four percent in his early ownership on on DraftKings. If he's four percent, I'll have at least at least four times that amount in, in GPPs, if not more, because I agree with you that he has a lot of upside. I just don't know that we can trust uh, Bill Belichick to feed him enough uh, to to merit rostering him at, what, 50, 5,200? Is that what he is? <clears throat> Let's see what DK. he is. I guess. Uh, 5,700 on DK. Yeah. Yeah, especially on a full PPR site. He's not going to be catching any passes. He, he may get more points with one touchdown than he does with his entire rushing yardage output. Yeah, so if you're going to play him in cash games, I agree. Uh, it's got to be fans over. He's 6,800. I think it's more reasonable there, um, but he does have to get in the end zone in order to reach value as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. On FanDuel, on FanDuel, sorry, Austin, but on yeah. FanDuel, I'd probably rather pivot to C.J. Anderson at the, nearly the same price. Yeah, or Christian McCaffrey or Ty Montgomery. There's a few guys right in that same price range that kind of prices him out of working out in those lineups. If DeMarco, right, Murray's, out, if DeMarco Murray's out, cash games are simple this week. Derrick Henry, Jay Ajayi. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Those would be my top two backs. Yep. Um, let's see. And again, Kareem Hunt gets overlooked. Right. Right. I'm a little bit concerned about Melvin Gordon this week against Kansas City. Uh, no running backs rushed for more than 50 yards against Kansas City this season. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, has been a little bit touchdown dependent uh, in a similar way for me, even though he's getting a lot of volume. So he's a guy that I don't like this week. Uh, tell me more, Jeff Pesquino. Seven catches for 65 yards. Yeah. I mean, 1.4 yeah. yards per carry, though. Like, let's, let's, so what? Let's points put the good, points. Yeah. In, in a PPR setting, sure, but in a non-PPR, that's not going to cut it. Or Qualified all you like, yeah. but on a, on a PPR, even on FanDuel, he had 17 points last week. Oh, with right. 13 yards. So that leaves plenty of room for upside. He's yeah. featured in the offense in either game script. Run or pass. Which is, which is good. Uh, I'm just a little bit nervous about this Kansas City defense this week. But That's you're fair. right. He is game script uh, proof. I'll buy that. So that, that gives him a leg up over some of these backs that are not in that position. All right, guys. Let's. Uh, any other running backs that we want to mention before we move on to our wide receivers? I think we've argued enough. <laughs> I like it, though. It's good. <laughs> Never. It's good to see both sides of it. It's good. Uh, let's talk wide receivers. I'll run through the injuries real quick here. Uh, we've been watching the Green Bay Packers receivers a little bit here. It looks like Jordy Nelson is going to be good to go this week. He uh, practiced on Wednesday, but Randall Cobb didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. So we want to keep an eye on whether he plays this week. Uh, Corey Coleman broke his hand. So that's why we were talking about guys like Richard Higgins or Ricardo Lewis. Uh, and then the other Corey, Corey Davis, uh, is out for multiple weeks with a hamstring injury there in uh, Tennessee. Danny Amendola looks like he might be coming back this week. That might uh, sort of sour your outlook on other Patriots pass catchers, potentially having him back in the lineup. Uh, Robbie Anderson looks like he may not play this week. Maybe that boosts Jermaine Curse a little bit here this week if you're 
digging for some cheaper options. And then uh, Devontae Parker of the Dolphins did not practice on Thursday. I know that he's kind of early week. He was kind of a popular guy to throw into GPPs. So keep an eye on that if you're considering Dolphins pass catchers for your GPPs. So I think there's a couple of clear-cut chalk guys here. Uh, Ryan, tell me who you think the chalk this week is at at wide receiver. Yeah, despite the team's offensive struggles, um, seeing a lot of, uh, of, of A.J. Green, and, and I think for good reason. Green Bay's secondary, especially on the perimeter, is not very good. A.J. Green, as we know, is very good. Uh, so that's, that's a great start. Uh, then, then we have a game script that should uh, feature some passing. We have a, a team in Cincinnati that's had 10 days to think about how bad they've been on offense. They have a new offensive coordinator they're working in. Green is a pretty ho-hum, uh, quiet guy. He complained about the old offensive coordinator. You got a little narrative street, feed the beast uh, angle. Um, you know, the, their best chance, Green Bay's best chance of covering him is, is with a second round rookie corner who did come into the game last week and do an admirable job on Julio Jones. But, uh, but you know, it, it's still A.J. Green versus a rookie or maybe worse. So uh, I think he's very popular and his price is down. So he's the chalk and I'm gonna be using him in cash for sure. Yeah, he's, he's going to be the highest owned guy, I think, in cash. Jeff, uh, who else do you see as a, a sort of the chalk this week or another guy that you like who maybe will be less played? Uh, I think Antonio Brown's near the top of the list. I like A.J. Green, number one. But I think Antonio Brown's going to be up there. It's really a decision of do you like Bell or do you like Brown, one of the, one of the two. Um, Kelvin Benjamin's going to get a lot of uh, attention. I just can't trust him just yet. I know he's going to get a lot of love this week. Uh, I think Keenan Allen's going to get overlooked but I think he sees a lot of volume. I, I'm looking at high volume, high targeted receivers, and uh, I'm a little concerned about who I'm going to use a wide receiver three. I'm looking at a debate internally about uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I think that the Patriots are going to blanket him a lot. Uh, he sees a ton of targets, but I, I'd rather pivot. I'm looking right now at pivoting to Demarius Thomas instead because I just see he seems to get a lot of volume and he'll be productive in the cash game. That's where I'm looking. Yeah, uh, you know, looking at some of these teams with lower implied totals to try to find those cheaper receivers can be a bit nervy, uh, but I'm with you. I'd rather pick a Denver pass catcher than try to go with a receiver that's probably going to be the focal point of the Patriots' defense here. Uh, If I was Bill Belichick, that's the guy I'd try to take away from the Houston offense. Um, Let's see, yeah, Antonio Brown is obviously going to be very highly owned uh, hey Austin, yeah. Austin, real quick, can yep. can we can we do like a, a red green on Demarius Thomas and DeAndre Hopkins? Sure, yeah. If I, you, I'm struggling with it myself. So sure, if you like uh, if you like DeAndre Hopkins more, show me green. If not, then show me. Uh, you know, if you'd rather take a Denver pass catcher, then show me red. Yeah, so okay. so we got we got uh, three reds. We got Jeff who likes Denver. I like Denver. Devin is. Are you just saying no to all? I'm of saying them? to neither. Neither to, to none of it. Yeah, and then, I guess and it then, doesn't have to be so binary. Yeah, and then and then Ryan and John are are bigger on the uh, Hopkins play. John, give me your take on Hopkins. Well, my I mean the the thing is the guy's got 29 targets this yeah. this season. I mean, and if they're going to be falling uh, falling behind in this game, he he's got to have double digit targets. His price is reasonable, um, and and there really isn't anybody else to throw to there. I don't care what Bill Belichick does, he's not going to be able to stop them from throwing the ball to to, to Hopkins. Even if he catches half of his targets, he's still going to end up with six to seven receptions for 60 to 70 yards. If he gets in the end zone. Uh, you, you, he's he's met value. On the other side of it, I actually think that Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders this week, I think they're they're in a in a bad bad spot. They're coming off of a big victory. They they looked great last week. They're coming back to Buffalo to play in an early game. Trevor Simeon is not a good quarterback. I am just I'm not convinced of it. I think this is a perfect spot to watch this team lose and 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 I think that both of those guys could potentially have terrible games. I didn't put the green up for Hopkins because of Hopkins as much as I did for anti-Denver. There's a lot of touchdown regression coming for Denver, especially uh, Simeon. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this is this is sort of the, uh, you know, Houston doesn't exactly have a sharp quarterback either. This is part yeah. of the, the issue with choosing some of these teams. Uh, a guy that I really like this week is Brandon Cooks, especially in GPPs. Uh, I think that Devin mentioned at the top of the show, uh, you know, Houston has got a lot of injuries in their secondary. 
Uh, Cooks is going to largely be uh, matched up against uh, journeyman Marcus Burley. He's played uh, against. Uh, he's played for four teams in the last five years, and this is only his second career start in five seasons. So Cooks, I believe, is going to be a, a great GPP play this week. Um, how can we help people with finding salary relief with some cheaper guys? I mean, I feel like Devontae Adams isn't really like a cheap guy, but he's like a mid-range guy that gives me a little bit of relief. Do you guys like, uh, let me see, uh, Devin, do you, do you like any of these Packers receivers in your lineups? Um, not, I'm not targeting them particularly, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, and I hate saying no to every question that you ask, but it, I, for, for a cheap, for a cheap guy, I'm just avoiding like the top end guys. I'm going with a, a more balanced roster. I can go out and I can get, um, I can go out and I can get Keenan Allen for 7,200 versus Devonte Adams who's 6,800. So Keenan Allen going against Philip Gaines, who has struggled a little bit this year in terms of coverage. And Keenan Allen has 10 targets in each of his two games. So He's a guy that I would rather have than either of the either of the Packers receivers. Now, if uh, if Randall Cobb is out, does that draw? And does anyone have any interest in uh, Geronimo Allison in this game? If he's he's pretty low priced. Can let me see the Black Eyed Joes on that. Any interest in Geronimo Allison if Cobb is out? I got a red from Ryan and Devin. I got a green from John. I'm kind of interested for GPPs. Jeff, you kind of a, a mixed butt bag over there. Tell me what you're thinking. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. I wouldn't use him on FanDuel. I might lean towards him on DraftKings. Uh, I have to check his DraftKings price. It's got to be lower than FanDuel. Minimum. Uh, Minimum. 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 Yeah, he's 3000 so, yeah, there, there. There's your GPP play on, on DraftKings. I totally understand it there. Um, GPP only on DraftKings. Yep, yep. Cool. Uh, let's see. Anybody have any other receivers that they want to talk about that we haven't touched on yet? Ryan, I think got we one. got it. Oh, well, before we jump there, I think we have to address the Oakland game. We've got to talk. Let's talk about, about Oakland, Cooper. definitely. Yeah, Jeff, tell us about Oakland. What do you think? Well, I think I really want to get John's opinion on this because he does a great job with the, the matchups. But I think we got Crabtree and Cooper. Um, we saw the first game, a lot of targets went to Cooper. He dropped them all, couldn't get in the end zone. He seemed allergic. Then last week, Crabtree had a great game. For uh, So the question is, who, where's Josh Moore? Josh Norman going to line up? Who's who's going to blanket if either? If he's going to do shadow coverage? If he's going to play one side? Uh, I'm I'm really curious to see where what John's research is, is showing as far as which which receiver to go after. Good point. Yeah, John, what do you got? Yeah, so uh, Josh Norman tends to shadow only when there's a strong wide receiver one without somebody that's complementary on the other side. So in this game, I do not expect him to shadow either Krabby or Cooper. And so what we're likely going to see is him stick to his strong side. Uh, when he was in Carolina, he played on his strong side most of the time. Uh, even when he started off in Washington, that was the case. And then the, uh, the fan base started to get on him, as you'll remember, saying that uh, he should be shadowing these people. He got paid too much to watch wide receiver ones on the other side of the field. So with that in mind, uh, we did some math, and I'll skip over the, the nuts and bolts of that. But I think what we're probably going to see here is that about 70% of the routes run by uh, Michael Crabtree this week are going to see Josh Norman in coverage. So about every, every two routes, uh, or excuse me, every three routes, two of them will be uh, against, against Cooper, or excuse me, against Crabtree, and the last one will be Cooper. So if you're targeting one here, I think it's Cooper, and I think that's a good thing from a game strategy perspective with Crabtree coming off of that big game last week. His price is inflated. Cooper came down a little bit. So all the pieces are there for a, a, a nice game from Cooper and a very high-scoring game this week with uh, Oakland's team total over four touchdowns. Yeah, that's a good analysis. I, I'm more on Cooper for sure. Ryan, did you have another receiver you wanted to mention, or were you wanting to talk about the Oakland guys? No, just real quick, if, um, if Jamison Crowder is considered quote-unquote cheap, that might be a good, good salary relief guy too, same game. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, he should see lots of targets in that game, uh, especially if they're playing from behind there. They're, you know, uh, underdogs by three points. I think that's a good call. All right, let's move on to tight ends. There are several injuries here uh, that we should look at. Uh, early in the week, there were some question marks about Rob Gronkowski. It seems like he is going to play this week. Just keep an eye on it just because the Patriots are a little funky with their Injury reporting, but it sounds like he got a limited practice in on Thursday. It sounds like he's going to be good to go. 
the big injury, though, is Greg Olson being out placed on IR here. I'm not necessarily saying you should go jump all over Ed Dixon here, but I think it does impact the rest of that offense. Uh, oh, I got a red flag from Ryan. He's excited about Ed Dixon. Tell me. Not, not, not. To, it was a reluctant red red flag. Not gonna <laughs> jump. Not jump all over. I didn't disagree with that. But uh, you know, for for a cheap dart throw, um, Ed Dixon has four targets this year, but he leads Carolina in uh, average depth of target, and New Orleans has allowed 13 of 15 15 yards or deeper passes to be completed this year. So. He might be the deep threat. He, he's, he, you know, outside of uh, receiver, you know, a Kelvin Benjamin or a Devin Funches type. So he'll be on the field more, and he might run deep. And that, all you need is one of those. Ed Dixon's one of those guys that everyone loves in gym shorts and a t-shirt on the field. But then when he gets onto the field, his speed doesn't just his speed for whatever reason doesn't translate. Hmm. Yeah, I don't disagree that he's that he's not a good player, but he's a cheap player, and if he catches one sure. or two passes, you're there. Yeah, I mean, the cheap player I'd rather have is Jack Doyle. For the Colts, um, Jamie Collins is look he's concussed, so he may not play. He's the Browns' only strong coverage linebacker, and we've seen that Doyle's becoming one of quickly one of the leading receivers on this Colts team as Brissett yeah. um, just doesn't know who else to throw to really because um, he, he's basically just his, his safety blanket for for him. The other guy likes Zach Ertz, so the the Giants have really struggled against uh, against tight ends this year. They they allowed. Um, They'll have seven catches for 59 yards and a touchdown to Jason Witten, and then five catches and 42 yards and a touchdown to Eric Ebron. So Zach Ertz has been the primary receiver in Philadelphia, so he's, he's a guy that I'm looking at this week. Yeah, yeah, I think Ertz will probably be the most heavily owned tight end this week, and I think Doyle's going to be the most popular uh, re- salary relief at tight end this week. Uh, I think some other people might pay up for Travis Kelsey here, but again, on a little bit tighter week, unless we get – uh, that relief from maybe like uh, DeMarco Murray scratching here. Uh, maybe Kelsey is a little harder, harder to reach for, but he's a good play this week. Uh, a couple more injuries to keep an eye on here. Uh, Tyler Eifer did not practice on Thursday. I don't think he's going to end up playing this week. Maybe that just means it all funnels to A.J. Green even more. Uh, he's going to get a million targets in this game. Uh, Jordan Reed sounds like he's going to go this week, but the coach keeps talking about him having like a million injuries. He got in a limited practice on Thursday, but Jordan Reed might be a guy that you stay away from even if he's active. He just sounds, a, I don't know, like a half running at half speed, kind of not a guy you want to trust. And then Jimmy Graham of the Seahawks didn't practice on Thursday either. Uh, he may be slightly towards doubtful for this game. Not that you're necessarily jumping for Jimmy Graham after – his first two weeks, but if you're trying to get sneaky in a GPP, he's probably not a guy you want to go after either. So if those are the guys you don't want to go after and Jack Doyle and Zach Ertz and Travis Kelsey are kind of the chalk, uh, Jeff, are there guys at tight end you would pivot to in GPPs, maybe at one of these high, middle, or low price points that you like? Uh, Well, there's one guy I kind of looked at this week, which was uh, I kind of like Zach Miller. He's seen a lot of targets. He's had 15 targets the last two weeks. Um, I expect them to be trailing Pittsburgh. I think then that they're probably going to be focusing on Tarek Cohen, uh, which could leave um, some openings up the middle for Zach Miller to see some targets, and he's going to be pretty low-owned. That's probably the first tight end I'm going to be looking at that's kind of off the board, but I'm going to be sticking mostly with Zach Ertz and maybe um, Jack Doyle. Yeah, I think those are going to be the most popular plays for sure, even in over in GPPs. John, do you have another tight end you might pivot to? Uh, I really don't have anybody outside of what we've talked about. The only other p- player on my list, um, or players, I guess, for GPPs, I still think that Gronk is a strong play. Coming off of a big game, a lot of people are going to be uh, afraid of him being hurt and not being at full speed. But he's the type of guy that uh, he can score two touchdowns on any given week. And he's 6,800 uh, for a team that's going to score probably 30 points this week. So uh, I think that you, you've got to give him consideration for GPP. Certainly avoid him in cash games. And then the other guy uh, that's, that's on my radar, I'll have some moderate ownership because of what we saw last week. And that was Evan Ingram uh, for the New York Giants. Uh, he should have had two touchdowns last week, dropped one. But he, um, he's got, uh, I'm looking here, five targets in week one, seven targets in week two, trending in the right direction. 
Um, and you know, we'll see what happens because I don't. I think Brandon Marshall. Uh, I was riding that train for two weeks. I'm off of it. I think he's done, and I think that we'll start to see Evan Ingram start to take some of those uh, those slot snaps because he definitely has the speed and the size to uh, basically take over whatever Brandon Marshall was brought in to do. Yeah, and just be uh, just keep an eye on Evan Ingram's uh, injury status. He did get into limited practice today, but he was in the concussion protocol or is like kind of just coming out of it. Sounds like he's going to play this week, but again, another guy that's been a little iffy uh, midweek. Uh, with one the- more, just to throw out there. So yep. if Jordan Reed doesn't play, it sounds like Jordan Reed's going to play. But if he doesn't, Vernon Davis is a, is a pretty nice punt. Um, Oakland has struggled a little bit with tight ends this year, um, as as they have the past couple of years. Yeah, and I think that's good. Hopefully we'll get news on that before you know the early games start, or uh, you maybe leave yourself uh, open for a late swap for that Sunday night football game. A guy that I might pivot from in GPPs is pivot from Jack Doyle to Eric Ebron. Uh, Atlanta is going to be missing <clears throat> excuse me, two of their uh, best pass rushers in this game with Courtney Upshaw out and Vic Beasley out. And so I don't think Ebron's going to be asked to stay in and block uh, at all here or uh, have to chip block anybody. Not that he's like the greatest blocker, but um, it should free him up to just focus purely on route running here. And Atlanta has struggled against the tight end both last year and some this year. So I like uh, Ebron in GPPs this week. Uh, Any other tight end talk? I think we kind of hit all the bases there. Oh, uh, Jeff, hit me with another tight end. I'll just throw one out there. Charles Clay, I think that Denver struggles against the tight end, especially in week one. I think he's going to get he's going to be very low owned and could see a lot of targets this week. He burned me last week. He'll definitely be low owned, but I you know, he's he's always a part of that offense. So that's that's not a bad call there. Ryan, who do you got? I, I thought at least one person would would steal this one, but um, I really like Jared Cook this week. Washington's corners uh, on on 30 targets have allowed six yards a target and no touchdowns. Safeties and linebackers on 31 targets have allowed 12 yards a target and three touchdowns. So Jared Cook can rip the seam, as we know, and uh, and so you know he's a good play, especially in a high total game. He's my top tight end play. I thought that Jeff mentioned him, so uh, apologies. Uh, okay. uh, he's well, maybe, definitely. Maybe, maybe he's him. maybe he's the chalk then. So, yeah. <laughs> that's why nobody I, I mentioned definitely, him. Definitely, I think he's the the top play for me at, from a price perspective on DraftKings. I should stop talking about Ed Dixon and get to the real plays then, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I like that. Rip the seam. Uh, That sounds like something I would do at Thanksgiving with my fans Um, because I ate too much. Um, Let's keep going to defenses and kickers. Uh, Show me those black eyed Joes. Who wants to talk about a defense or a kicker? We got John saying no, no surprise there. And we'll get to Devin and Jeff. Uh, Devin, uh, tell us, do you have a defense or a kicker that you like this week? Giorgio Tavecchio on to Jeff. I just wanted to say his name. Not Matt Bryant? Nope. Oh, man. It's that, over. That breakup break is still up. hard for me to, to to take in. You know, I've got to choose sides. Yeah, it's the, high, it's the highest scoring game of the week, and uh, Tobacco has actually been pretty good this year, so um, he's, he's my top kicker this week. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, uh, tell us about uh, a kicker or a defense you like here. What do you got? I think we're in a week where we might be struggling to find some cap room, we might we're probably going to be looking for the cheaper kickers. Which so at forty five hundred on Fanduel, the top, the top guy I got is Ryan Suck up for Tennessee. I think that's a good cushion, especially if you're playing Derrick Henry. It's a, it raises your floor in case he doesn't find the end zone. Uh, for a hundred dollars more for a GPP play, I'm looking at the Eagles kicker Elliott. Uh, for 4,600, he's going to be very low owned. He's got a big leg. He's not well known because he was signed after week one with an injury, and he's a pretty good kicker. But if you find up find a little bit of, of extra dollars, I would not be opposed at all of spending all the way up to Goskowski to lock up the points for New England. Yeah, I think that's a good assessment of sort of like the the high, middle, low there. I like the Elliott pick there as well. Uh, in terms of defenses, I think the chalk defenses this week are probably uh, New England going up against Houston. Uh, Miami, they're playing the Jets, which is usually a good bet. And uh, I like Philadelphia's defense as well going up against the Giants. I think that's my favorite of the three. I'm getting them in a lot of my cash lineups, and they're cheaper than New England and Miami. So it gives me just a little bit of salary relief there. Uh, I think that Denver is also in play here against Buffalo, but you guys uh, expressed some concern about the West Coast team traveling east. 
So maybe I should come off of the uh, Denver love uh, for the defense. John, you expressed that concern. Would you say that that's kind of across the board for all of the Broncos for you, including their team defense? Uh, I'm okay with their team defense because I'm not really impressed with Buffalo. You, you know, the one thing that Buffalo has done this year is just they've actually looked good on defense. I, would, I think they're a good GPP defense this week. They've only allowed 21 points all season. I know one of those games was to the Jets, so you can discount that. But the, the secondary component, uh, or opponent, excuse me, uh, who escapes me at this moment, they weren't a terrible team. Um, Carolina. The, Carolina, yeah. So um, they, their defenses look pretty good. They're playing at home, and they're hosting a team that I really don't believe are as good as they played off of that big, that big win in, uh, against Dallas last week. Right on. Let's talk about stacks, guys. This is a chance to tell people uh, how to get some high upside for their GPPs and maybe squeeze in a few more plays that you didn't get a chance to mention in the other sections. Uh, Ryan, I'm going to give you first dibs on stacks. Tell me about uh, a stack or two that you're excited about this week. Well, so first, I kind of want to go with a, a concept, right? And normally we talk stacks, quarterback, receiver, quarterback, tight end. This, this could be a week to stack quarterback running back. So we, we have a number of, we've talked about the, the, the high-end running backs, but we've got a number of guys that like to catch passes in good matchups to do so, starting with Theo Riddick against Atlanta. Um, we know that, that, uh, that Atlanta gives up a lot of yards to the, uh, to the running backs. Um, so Theo Riddick and Matthew Stafford. Riddick has shown a penchant for catching touchdowns. Um, we know, we think Carolina's going to score a lot of points. Christian McCaffrey can catch passes. Uh, Greg Olson's not there for any more targets. He should have caught a touchdown last week, but Newton overthrew him. Um, you can go back to the well with Ty Montgomery. Uh, as, as we saw last week, he had a receiving touchdown. Uh, but the, you know, the more traditional one that I like, it, going with a whole game stack, uh, that would be pretty contrarian given the decision between um, Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree, is just going Derek Carr uh, or Kirk Cousins, for that matter, and then throwing in Jared Cook, who I mentioned earlier, and... Uh, and Jamison Crowder. Right on, and kind of stacking up some guys that could hit it big in that high-scoring game. Devin, uh, who are some stacks that you like this week? Yeah, it's not this week, but because of their ownership, I'm starting um, Russell Wilson and Doug, well, Doug Baldwin every week until they hit. Um, <laughs> so, no, but hear me out. So, sure. eventually we know that Baldwin has a tendency to have two or three touchdown games, and at some point, you or you, you can make that bet that it's going to come. So um, it's not really a matchup play. It's just more of a strategy play that until that comes, I'm just going to keep doing it. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, that's that's basically what I did two years ago when we got into that live final that same week was the, the Russell Wilson stackage. Um, so, Jeff, uh, tell me about a stack that you're interested in. Uh, I'll mention two. Uh, I, I like... Uh, we didn't. I don't think we mentioned the Miami defense, but I think they pair well with Jay Ajayi. I think the Jets are just terrible, yep. so I think that uh, they, you got to put that one out there. And I'm going to go back to the well with Philadelphia. I think Carson Wentz and a wide receiver. I don't think we mentioned. Um, actually, yeah, I have three stacks. Sorry, uh, Alshon Jeffrey is only going to be a couple percent owned. Uh, I think he's going to be very low owned and have a good matchup because Jenkins is going to be out. And in a similar fashion, Deshaun Jackson is going to have a, a good matchup because I think he's, uh, you're going to have Mike Evans blanketed. Everybody's going to look to him. Um, he had a big week. He should have had an extra touchdown last week. But uh, I think that uh, Deshaun Jackson could find the end zone and, and have a pretty good afternoon with Jameis Winston. Nice. John, uh, wrap us up here with stacks. Give us a couple that you like. I'll give you a, a complicated stack, so I'm only going to give you one. Uh, I like a, basically the entire Philadelphia Eagles. If we're, you know, so I, I'm going with Carson Wentz to Zach Ertz. Uh, that's my my stack, but I want to pair that up with the Philadelphia defense, which we all kind of agreed that we like. And I'm going to add in Darren Sproles there at 3,900 because last week Lagara Blunt didn't get a single carry. And I feel like uh, this team has an implied team total somewhere around 25 points. Maybe they get lucky and get four touchdowns. I might get a, a piece of all four of those. If they get a special teams touchdown, I get that. Sure. If I get a punt return, I get um, Darren Sproles doing it. Um, I, I, I think I got a, a large piece of that Philadelphia offense by getting those four players involved this week. You uh, you hate the Giants, like with the, the burning of a thousand <laughs> suns here. Like that's... That's just like stepping on the Giants and rubbing them into the ground. 
and it, pretty sure can, Eli Manning hates the Giants right now too. The thing, the thing that's beautiful about that is I, I, I just added it up before before you came to me. It's seventeen thousand eight hundred on on DraftKings. You could have oh, wow. Matt Ryan and Julio for sixteen four, or all four of those players for seventeen eight, and one you thing, can imagine one, what, one what thing that enables you. Sproles, Sproles isn't returning punts this year. Say again. Sproles is not returning punts this year. He only has one punt return. Well, maybe, so you're saying there's a one. chance. <laughs> <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I got ahead of myself, so maybe I but, didn't get the punt return. So, so I, I do the I do the Eagles right up. He is the guy. I mean, he could catch a touchdown very easily for yeah. once. So it's, um, I like it. Yeah, but not necessarily for the punt returning, but instead because he'll probably get a decent amount of work in the running game. Yeah, the punt return that he came out out there last week, they were losing the game and they were trying to get a spark. But he's not because he is the primary running back. They're not having him do the primary punt duties this year. Oh, gotcha. Sounds like sounds like you're still winning then if you're rostering him because if they're not using him on punts, it's because they are using him on offense. Correct. And he's thirty nine hundred, so uh, I yes. think that's a pretty good call. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you guys mentioned some of my favorite stacks already, but I'm going to run through a few high owned stacks that if you can find differentiation at other positions you can kind of stack these guys up and find cheaper guys elsewhere <clears throat> i think we're going to see a lot of uh car matched with cooper uh, but probably crabtree will be the higher owned guy in that stackage uh i like stacking brady and gronk that kind of goes with what john was saying in terms of gronk could be a good gpp play here uh i see uh aaron Rodgers pairing up with maybe even jordy nelson just because he's a little bit dinged up but sometimes we've seen jordy nelson have a big game even coming off of sort of an injury game. And then uh, I like uh, Cam Newton and Kelvin Benjamin, matching those two guys up. We talked about matching up with McCaffrey. Uh, I like Benjamin for those red zone looks that Greg Olson was getting. I think Benjamin's going to be featured a lot uh, when they're down close to the end zone if they're passing. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Is anyone going to go as crazy as uh, – starting a Dalton AJ Green stack because they love green so much. Can I see the, the Black Eyed Joes? Is there any worth to stacking in Cincinnati here? I, I'm, I don't have the balls to do it, but uh, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing, you know, Jeff, Jeff feels strong. He's got it. There's a kind of negatives and uh, the problem is, is The problem is the ownership. So Green's going to be one of the most popular guys. Right. You're going to need Dalton to, I mean, Green's really going to have to have a big day to <coughs> That's a good point, game theory wise. Uh, that you know, if, AJ Green's not going to buy it necessarily. What do you say, Jay? Jeff? If if it's a tight, uh, if it's a tight build and you need a couple hundred bucks and you need the savings, and Dalton affords you some better combinations, you may have a more unique lineup by going pivoting to down to Dalton. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and yeah. getting that differentiation purely at the at the quarterback position. All right, guys, let's go to our parting thoughts. This is your chance to get in, uh, you know, last players you forgot to mention or words of wisdom about week three. Uh, John, lead off our uh, parting thoughts. I, I kind of channel my inner uh, sort of Sigmund Bloom here. Like, I feel like this is our time to sit on the couch and, uh, you know, okay. just kind of talk about uh, week three in a nice, peaceful kind of way. Uh, I'll finish off where I started off, and that is be careful of these away favorites. Uh, they, they, they really are um, uh, landmines waiting, waiting to be had. So you need to be careful with uh, the guys that you think are in great spots and they're playing away from home because they really can blow up in your face. And I'll just add one more thing. I'm going to do this every week, I think. Uh, just highlight an article uh, this week. I talked about mine last week, uh, so I won't do that every week. I'll, I'll at least share the wealth. Um, I, I think that um, you know the one I want to talk a little bit about this week is actually Ryan's article. It's Trend Spotting. Um, edited it this morning. Uh, it's it's entitled "Earth So Good This Week." Uh, you know he's got a lot of interesting things here. Looking at looking for trends, either positive or negative. Um, just things like uh, guys who are heavily targeted and haven't yet found the end zone. Um, funnel defenses. Uh, looking at key matchups and, and how, to, how to exploit those things, all presented to you in a, in a different way than, than most articles are presented. Uh, this week, uh, he's got four guys who have, been hard, who have been highly targeted and not yet found the end zone. You'll find that, in our, that article this week if you, if you head over to our DFS landing page and check it out. 
Nice. That's a good mention. That is a great article. Ryan, I'll pitch it to you next since uh, you, you know, Jeff, I mean, John brought up your article. Well, you got to let me stop blushing first. So thanks, John. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I guess not every potential shootout is going to be a shootout is what I want to say. So last week we had two on paper. They kind of were. They paid off. This week we, we have three, uh, Washington, Oakland, Atlanta, Detroit, and Carolina, New Orleans. I'm a little skeptical of Carolina and New Orleans going crazy. Carolina could win that game by three touchdowns, and New Orleans could score 14 or fewer points. It, you know, Drew Brees on the road. He doesn't do well in Carolina historically. So I'm a little nervous about that. I'm a little nervous about the Cam Newton, Calvin Benjamin stuff, although if they do win by a lot, those guys will probably be involved. So just maybe don't, don't think every potential shootout is going to be, I guess, is my parting thoughts. Yeah, it's going to be – I'm very curious about this week with all those sort of like landmined, highly favored away teams. Devin, a parting thoughts. Three things real quick. So projecting ownership this week, uh, Steve Buzzer does a great job with it. It's 100% free, so we're featuring a free article every single week. Second, Miles Garrett is looking like he might play. So if he does play, the Browns defense might be viable. And third, never, ever, ever – Start Giants running backs. <laughs> nice. Good good tip there. Everyone was rushing out to get Ar- <laughs> Orleans Darkwa this week. but uh, Paul Perkins, yeah. I said it before the show, is one of the worst running backs I've, I've ever seen. Darkwa's going to save that team, though. You just watch there, Devin. He's, he's going to make it happen. No, he's not. Uh, Jeff, uh, parting thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, I'll close out with, uh, I think everything's been great so far, but I do want to point out that we're going to see a lot of spread of ownership. So if you're making ownership decisions, cash game decisions especially, lean towards the guy that's going to see a lot of touches, especially in the game being ahead or behind. So especially if a running back owns the backfield and has not going to see competing touches, like this is why I'd shy away from McCaffrey in cash because Stewart made vulture the touchdown. Go with the running backs that own the backfield see 85 plus percent of the touches yeah i think that's a good safe play especially for cash there well thank you guys uh for uh joining the show as always and uh if you want to check out our content over at football guys it's at footballguys.com slash dfs the package that includes all of our website content is 45 dollars for the entire season we put out about 20 different pieces for dfs every week and then we've got a ton of other stuff for season long dynasty idp you name it all of that is included for just 45 dollars. check that out footballguys.com slash dfs so on behalf of jeff pesquino devin knotts ryan hester and john lee i'm austin lee saying thank you for watching and thanks for being a football guy To check out all of our DFS content over at footballguys.com, click on the icon in front of Ryan's face. To subscribe to our Football Guys TV YouTube channel, be sure to click on the button on John's face. And if you'd like to see our latest video, click below me now.